Dagut. I'm Ava. So the word I just said, Dagut, means hello in the Irish language. And I'm sure you're wondering why Irish language? Why Dagut? Because the heritage of my book is Irish. The book in my book is called Tech Marpa, which means the dead house in Irish. I thought I would add a bit of a unique touch to my book talk by adding in a few Irish languages. The author of this book is Dawn Kurtick. She is a psychological sinister fiction writer. She has a very spooky sinister imagination. The genre of this book is thriller, horror, and adult fiction. The age group for this book is 15 to 16, um, unless your parents give their consent on a younger age group for this book. This book was, re was released on August 6, 2015. Miss Kerchick has also written these two books, and this trees crept in as well as The Creeper Man. Both books dark and sinister. The story is about two girls, Carly Johnson and Caitlin Johnson. Their situation is very unique. Two girls, one body. Two souls, one body. The only people who know about them are Annabelle Langsing, their therapist, each other, uh, Nada, Chananda Prey, Ari Haight, and I don't know, there isn't last names for these two characters, Brett and Scott, and they go on adventure together. Annabelle is this manipulative, cruel therapist who is trying to convince Carly that Caitlin is a fragment of her imagination, which isn't true. She's trying to convince Carly that she is crazy and needs to get rid of Caitlin, which is awful. That is the situation of the characters. This story has a very dark, sinister, suspenseful vibe to it. Yes, vibe. <laughs> the kids encounter so many things that make their lives change. By kids, I mean teenagers. Um, their lives are changed by all these different events that happen. Um, they go through death. They encounter Ouija boards, possessions evil snakes, uh, lost souls, and lies. The way that this book is laid out is so cool, so unique, and it makes the book by far way more interesting. So, first of all, the cover, let's just go, like, it's so cool. <laughs> um, but there's so many different ways that they've laid it out. In some ways, there's burnt diary pages, there are sticky notes between the two girls. There are police entries. There's diary entries. Um, there's police reports. Um, there's scribbles. And then there's video footage. And then there's audio footage. Um, it's very, very cool. My two favorite parts of the book are a email that Caitlin sends to Ari saying who she is um, and her story and then the other one is a conversation between Annabelle Lansing and Carly and Caitlin Johnson. So, Let's go into the entry of the email. From Relax Chick, Caitlin Johnson, to Ari Hate 558. Date, 7th of November, 2004. Subject, confession. My name is Caitlin, and I am a ghost. I don't exist, or so they tell me. During the day, I literally don't exist. Most people go to sleep, wake up to the sun, walk around in the light, not me. My world is, and always has been, darkness, shadows, and night. My sister, we've always used that word, Carly and I exist in the same body. I only come out at night. 
Carly is the one you see during the day at school, the one who ignores you, the one who probably looks at you like you're a total stranger, if she looks at you at all. And the one everyone thought was at the party, I'm Kate. I'm the one who talks to you in the confession booth, who has a weird sense of humor, or lack of it. The one who went swimming with, the one you went swimming with, the one you went to the party with, the one you've been writing to, me, Caitlin. My doctor's convinced that I'm not really here. She keeps trying to convince me of it too. Sometimes she wears me down enough that I start to think maybe she's right. But I don't appear, I didn't appear after my parents died, as she's convinced. I've always been here. It's just the way we are, me and Carly, together in one form. We keep this a secret because we always have. Our parents sort of convinced us it was the best way unless we wanted to be locked up in a mental, in a mental ward for duration of the universe. We even talked about pretending it was some kind of memory problem or something. Or something. In the end, though they just decided to hide me away, I've been hidden ever since. I guess they were right after all. People do think I'm crazy when I tell the truth. They try to trick me, lie to me, tell me things that are so beyond hurtful that I think they might be descendants from hell to do that. They make me feel like poison, like an illness, a symptom, some horrible disease. But hopefully you won't. I don't expect you to believe me what I'm telling you. But please, please, at least acknowledge this email. For obvious reasons, I hate to be ignored. Sincerely and very afraid, Caitlin Johnson, girl of nowhere. Now, the conversation between the therapist and Caitlin. How are you feeling today, Carly? I told you not to call me that. Caitlin then, how are you? You already know. I thought we could continue our talk from last session. I told you everything. Yes, but you haven't let me tell you everything yet. I don't belong here. Caitlin, we found you on the top of a roof of a school. You had lesions and bruising on your head. Presumably from repeated impact. You need treatment. I'm happy to send you back to Elmbridge, eventually. But you need to show me that you can cope with on your own. I'm taking the meds. That's a good start. A good one. But you need to talk to me. I don't see the point. I don't know what you want me to say. The first topic that comes to your head. Just start. This is stupid. Please try. Please. Come on, you can do it. The first thing. I, I can't. I want to stop. Caitlin, you have to try. I said I want to stop. End of tape. Now, I've mentioned Ari Haight before, and I thought I would tell you who exactly he is. He's someone that Caitlin met, and he think, and in the start, he thought Caitlin was just Caitlin. Not Carly and Caitlyn. Ari grows to become Caitlyn's love of her life. But she finds out who he really is and things go downhill from there. I'm not going to tell you who he is or else it would be a big spoiler. The mood of this novel is suspenseful and evil. There is nothing friendly about this book. So if you like your sappy romance, cutie, my little pony... Put the book away and don't read it, okay? I would suggest anything but this book if that's the kind of genres you're into. The book is so well written. You feel with the characters. You feel their pain. You feel their sadness. You feel when they're scared. You'll I tensed up so many times as I was reading it. It was crazy. I recommend this book to anyone who likes a freaky story or enjoys spooky, suspenseful, creepy, evil stories. I loved this book so much because all the characters were just, they're 
personalities were so cool. Everyone was so different from each other. It was such a good book. So, if this book sparked your interest, the bookstore is open till 10. <laughs> Alright, thank you for watching this book talk and have a great rest of your day.